Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to game number five of six of tonight's PUBG EU Pro Scrims. The day is Tuesday, the 28th of July, 2020. My name is Jorisar, and this plane is skipping its way across Miramar for the final time this evening. We've had an incredible four games so far. 2-1 by FaZe Clan, 2-1 by Northern Light. But who is going to close out the day? Everything remains to be seen. It's a 2 o'clock, 2 and 8 o'clock plane path this time around. So El Pozo, out of bounds. La Cobrelia, out of bounds. Uh, I don't really think anyone drops Puerto. That is a long drop, probably out of bounds. FaZe Clan are unlikely to go all the way to Monte Nuevo. I guess they could actually, if they, if they stay south of it. It's a bit of a long drop. It looks like they might be, so I stand corrected there. No problems whatsoever. Uh, who else? Oh, once again, we have Razor Edge and Blaze Esports. In and about. Minas Generale. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So Apocalypse more or less on top of a doozy. Really accenting that point with the Mini-14 there. Laws are very close by. Guys, if you want to know how quick this um, this fight is happening, Crimson is the coach for Raise Your Edge. Crimson can't even spectate this yet because he's not even dead. That's, that's how quick this fight is. Um, these guys are absolutely insistent that they're hop-dropping each other. By the way, finally, a, a, a rather different circle. We've had two northeastern circles. You now get a southwestern one. Isn't that exciting? Laza is going to be fairly lonely moving on to the southern portion of Minas. He's actually going to be running away at this point. Rip and Laza. Both making it away. Taking a little bit of damage. Lipsin is together with Rip. So really it's Laza we're watching out for here. He's being hunted, and he's right next to Monkey. Oh, sorry, I thought he was actually there. I thought he was literally there. Monkey knows where Laza roughly is. And this is a problem, because Laza's not moving. So Rip and Lipsin basically have to get knocks on Raise Your Edge, or otherwise buy time for Laza to be able to move to them. Udir, in the meantime, is going to be working on getting a bit more of a long-range solution. And that's mainly because, actually, with that trusty Winchester, it's going to be in the 3 o'clock position to maybe offer a flank. Let's see where he ends up going. He knows roughly where Laza is. Won't be able to spot him, though. He knows where the rest of the team are. This could end up being a bit of a standoff, and that's awkward indeed. Double next to Iro. After what happened last game, do you really want to be taking on Iro? Double. Double balls, ladies and gentlemen, for double here. Let's see if he can do it. He's listening for... I don't think Iro knows exactly where he is. Does Iro suspect someone there? He didn't see him! He stopped still! Iro! He stood still! Oh, and Iro, ladies and gentlemen, the absolute king of game number four. Unfortunately, is going to be one of the first ones out in game five. Really good sneaking there from Double. Ninja credentials plus one. Red line have got a compound on the southern hills. By the way, these southern hills, I want to talk about them later on. They're one of my favorite places to play on Miramar. Mixed team are coming up on Team Liquid, though, and I want to just uh, have a quick peek as to whether Clib 
get spotted by Silas in time. We now know the answer. Silas one hit away from destroying Clib there, but... Clib was also taken by surprise. So now, now that everyone knows where everyone else is, let's see what happens. A couple more shots. Disabling the truck as well. Clib really needs to um, find a way to get with the rest of the team. Silas has spotted multiple people. Now, he doesn't care. He seems to be going for it still. What an absolute baller. Silas looking to get a little bit further onto the high ground. Mexi and Jeems, though, are now supporting Clip. Sigsy spots him from afar, but has to retreat after getting shot at by several people. Clip still not out of the frying pan, but uh, Team Liquid have done a good job of coming to the aid of their teammate. Yeah. Oh no! It's Mert! Mert goes ahead and steals Clip. So after all that, Digital Athletics will get a point onto Team Liquid. Unfortunate way to start. They might opt to actually go for a, uh, a tactical retreat here. And try and get a, a favorable position in zone instead. Several teams rotating in. You can hear in Tropic at the crossroads. Between Chumacera and Picado. They're looking to go there for now. Very, very crowded. Middle of this zone. Mixed team opting to go south instead. And Entropic not actually moving. Raise your edge. Finally eliminating Blaze. At the start, it looks like only Udir. What the? Uh. 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 Okay. I mean, I don't... I, I did actually have something for this. It, it goes something along the lines of this. But unfortunately, I didn't have that ready at the time. Razor Edge are doing some interesting things in game number five. Let's put it that way. Um, but they have got the most pan kills of anyone in the game so far. Right. Back onto Entropic. They're not going to be rotating any further. I think they were thinking about going a little further into zone and opted not to. Which is fine. Um... Just south of them are Digital Athletics, so they were actually wise not to do that. So many teams within this uh, area now, and this is what I wanted to talk about before, guys. So, this is low ground here on the south. This is uh, high ground here on the north. And the there are so many little places to play. Up and down these hills. It's actually a beautiful place to try and fight. It's really, really quite fun. Vashku... Is Vashku trying to get on the, uh... No, he, I thought he was going to try and get onto the ceiling there. Onto the roof, I should say. <clears throat> Alia actually spotting Vashku from way downtown. And FaZe. Recognizing that... Hang on a second. Someone is in here, but they're not firing very much. That to FaZe says there are only one or two people, therefore we can push. We are literally inside the wall watching Fuzzface and Vashku right now. AT spotted out of the window. And Fuzzface will get told this is where to move in. The door gets opened. Oh! That was not supposed to happen. I clicked him and then it unfortunately went to Tornado Energy. I'm very sorry about that, guys. Well, Vashku goes down there. This is what happens when the game thinks you um, you click on someone on the mini-map rather than someone right next to you. I occasionally make that mistake. Very difficult to do that sometimes when observing. Sorry! Vashku, though, is down. FaZe Clan have lost an 8C, so 8C has at least been confirmed kill. So it was a trade between Omikin and FaZe. Omikin now moving further into the circle. It has popped. It's going west of Los Leones. Now, this is interesting. Most of this cliff face that everyone was rushing into... A lot of circles end here, and this one isn't going to. Let's just say that straight away. It's not going to. This is going to be very entertaining indeed. G 
great shot onto Hawkey. Digital Athletics still just doing a little bit of poke damage and letting everyone know that they're there. No one's moving up on them just yet. A good defense of that compound and very, very close to center, actually. And Tropic are going to be pleased with their position, as are Team Liquid. Team Liquid are a little split at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if Ibby joins Jeems and Mexi if it turns out they have to. See if that ends up happening soon. Artur has just been taken down by TSM. And is Artur, I've been told in chat, not Aptip, A-P-T-Y-P. Artur in Russian. Divan now one member short. And Vard is going to have Fex for company momentarily. Good little bit of stunt driving there. Are they going to move out somewhere else? I'm not 100% sure. Navi have got Picardo now. So they're taking over the Team Liquid position by default. Mixed team on the south side. They haven't really been in trouble for a while. They're now moving out actively against Tornado Energy. Flashbang is getting used to eliminate Sigzi. That guarantees the point for Melman. Moving into the stables now to prevent being shot from round the side, although a member of mixed team has actually spotted him doing that. Silas is at the other end of this building. Silas, a tremendous player. I don't know if... Sp okay, Sparking is coming around to help. I wasn't sure if he was helping or telling Silas they need to rotate away. But Silas reasonably serious. We're trying to get the kills inside this stable building. There's no one there, though. Nobody there. Melman. We'll get spotted in a second. Oh, why does it do that? I clicked Silas. There we go. He clicks the player in the distance. My bad, guys. At least uh, no one died that time. Spots Quizzy outside. Silas could seriously play spoiler here. Finally goes for a reload. No man, an example. Outside the stables now. Into the long building. Anonymous and Sparking have moved further away. And that's because we are going seriously north in between Picardo and Los Leones. This is not a circle many of our teams were expecting. And if you want proof of that, just look at the positions they took, right? Everyone was banking on the south side. But apparently not. They think it's clear. And Silas is still here. In the meantime, the rest of the team in a bit of a shootout. Omican Sports getting spotted by Mixed Team and actually getting a bit of help from Quizzy as well. Omican uh, out of the game unexpectedly early here. No, I beg your pardon. T-Bone is still alive. T-Bone with one kill to the team is out in no man's land. Safe, at least, but uh, my goodness. Very far away. Sparking, on the other hand, is absolutely taking names. Silas in the stable sadly just died to Quizzy. If you're in the crosshairs of Sparking... He's basically taking you down right now, so I kind of want to watch him for a while as they move up onto Team Redline. They're gatekeeping in very aggressively on the southern side of the circle. Melman gets taken down as well. Anonymous firing a couple of extra shots. But it's QB and this res that I want to know about. That's a Molotov! Oh, so close as well, QB! If, oh my god, if that was two meters further back. QB would be dead right now. Very nicely done by Sparking. Sparking gets spotted by Marv, so Redline will know that he's not that close. And this red zone, red zone, blue zone even, doing a reasonable amount of damage. QB now getting his revenge. One hit point a second, but it doesn't matter if you are knocked. And Sparking, unfortunately, will pay for the thirst there. Now we watch Team Liquid and Entropic in the same compound. Another fight between these two teams. Jeems, Mexi, and Ibby available. Versus, I think, the full Entropic team. 
They're split 2-2. Two, two. We've got half of the team in the brick building, another half on the high ground. They're now moving down to be both in the brick. So a lot of respect being given to Team Liquid here. Two squads sharing a compound. Speaking of two squads sharing a compound, Digital Athletics and M-Force are absolutely going at it hammer and tongs. So this is going to be a much, much faster fight. Dark Choice is getting taken down and Doctus following Sixmo in, but Sixmo, well, Sixmo Six sensing it, turning around, hearing the footsteps and going, oh no, you don't. They're being third partied from elsewhere as well, which means they have to get the res very, very quickly. And unfortunately, Metralis is going to go down in the backside, which means Sixmo, after resing Smash, are going to be the only players left up. Dogster is now getting res now by Rafa. It's a 2v3. Once Smash uses a first aid kit. Oh, 3v3 now. They've got Murat as well. Very dynamic situation this. So, one player lost for each team. Here comes the Molly outside rather than off the wall. Rafa choosing to go upstairs. Mert very, very low. Dogs are right on top of him. Getting spotted through the hatch. Smash goes down on the outside. Mert has a lot of work to do. It's a 1v1. It's Rafa versus Mert. I beg your pardon, Sixmo up as well. He was just off to the side there. Everybody now healing. We've got FaZe Clan versus Northern Lights in Picardo as well. And they have to move in through Na'Vi. So much going on. These guys are still fighting. And still being ultra aggressive against each other. Grenades coming in. That's a good flash. And sadly, that was a flash. The grenade from Rafa is going to get smashed. How many revives have these teams had? This is like some sort of trick shot. Dogs are looking to try and stop the revive by hanging off the edge. And Sixmo will prevent that. Mert and Sixmo. Up against Rafa and Dogs are by the looks of things. And there we go, in the middle of the revive, Digital Athletics, Finish, M-Force, E-Shop. But what a intense battle that was. Northern Lights moving away from Phase Clan. They might be moving into Creep very, very shortly. Pryle could have an opportunity here, choosing not to exercise it at the moment. Phase Clan really struggling on the edge. Entropic Team Liquid still sharing the same compound. Northern Lights could be sending it in their direction. We're on board now with D. Ooh. And Senya seizing the opportunity. Boy. Oh no! Oh dear, absolute disaster for Northern Lights. Deep has to heal. Batulin's down now as well. And it's all going wrong. Can they resuscitate this situation? They need to be able to get away from here as well, remember? Just being in the smokes on the road is not good enough for them. That is a terrible position to be in long term. Na'Vi really throwing a spanner in the works. Deep. Deep saying, Spyro, get out of the way! I've team killed one guy, I don't need you in there as well. Grenade into the shaft just to make sure, and Deep is going to go ahead and make that his home. He's saying, look, I'm done with the driving. I'm going to take this, and, and the next circle is a 7 o'clock hard shift. And Tropic and Team Liquid will be happy, Redline will be happy. Team Liquid right next to Atomical. Atomical goes down, unfortunately, a 4v1. It wouldn't have to be Atomical, it would have had to be an Astronomical. Him to get away from that and as talented as Atomical is, a 4v1 versus TSM is asking a lot. It's asking a lot of anyone in this lobby, to be perfectly fair. Raise your edge now, moving in predominantly on foot. Little bit surprised not getting third partied as much as they are and Tropic are realizing that other people are shooting this way, so they're going to go ahead and retreat into their compound. They've got no need to poke out right now. Absolutely no need. Na'Vi, two players, one kill, but doing so much damage to the game of Northern Lights. Here they come. Matching motorbikes. Driving almost past Uber, but that doesn't matter. Gustav taking a few shots at them, but FaZe Clan are in real trouble here.
The Yayit is strong with Na'Vi right now, and they could be moving straight into T-Bone. They are moving straight into T-Bone. Senya goes down. What about the rest? Are they going to send it? They are not. If T-Bone wants the point, he's got to risk it. He does. FaZe Clan also eliminated. Now we're watching Creep versus Northern Lights. Northern Lights were stuck in their position thanks to the intervention of Senya. So now they are fighting Edge alongside Creeps. That was nearly an amazing nade onto Perfect. So, so close. Big flank coming out here from Hype. Uh, possibly too much of a big flank coming out here from Hype. I think he's worried someone's there. They're not. Being very deep with this flank. But now that he knows no one's there, he can proceed. In the best direction to help his team. He spots Spyro. Oh no, the rest of the team are engaging without him, and this is a problem. Hype now, the only player left up. Finds perfect. But Deep is right here. Oh, Deep gets third party from elsewhere. If Deep manages to come up over this ridge, that is it. That's Curtains. Creeps eliminated though from Batulins. And they're going to have to have a quick res on the road. This is a high risk, high rewards res here. Oh, actually, just crawling into circle because just the other side of the road should be safety. Hoo! There we go. Team Liquid on Entropic now. Absolutely messing them up. That's two downs. Jeems and Ibby still up. And managing to get the victory there. That's four kills now for Team Liquid with three players left alive. And the next circle still has this compound in. Crucial. Team Liquid now have ownership of both buildings. It's them and Redline. They're the only players in a compound now. Moving into phase six. Unless you count T-Bone as being in a compound. Oop. And that's it. Sixmo, with another amazing bit of sixth sense, gets T-Bone. Spots the shack goes, hang on a second, that's where I'd hide. Instant molly, headshot to follow up, enough damage. Merc down though, and I don't think Sixmo will be able to follow. That's the entirety of the Northern Lights team moving down from the north side of the circle. All four left alive still, remember. They might have crashed one of these compounds if it weren't for Na'Vi, we won't know. Orange, the last surviving member. Between a trailer and a motorbike in the middle of the circle, just trying to survive as long as possible. TSM as well. Relatively quiet game. Iro going down very early on, but Fex, Miracu, and Vard all staying alive. All doing a good job. It's been quiet by their standards. They can pull off these 15 kill chicken dinners just as well as anyone. But as far as being out in the open are concerned, they've got position. They have a nice ridge to work with. You don't have to worry about anyone behind them. All sorts of sense. Warning, there's someone here. What does a doozy do? A doozy does what a doozy does, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Raise your edge. Crashing Team Liquid. Getting pre-fired there. Absolutely no chance of pushing in. Flashbang goes out. A little bit of extra loot from the loot boxes outside. More grenades coming in as well. Oh, dear! Do Team Liquid know that that was Raise Your Edge? Because that is a big, big opening for them. Udia finds Mexi. A doozy is already up. And Monkey now revealing his position on the hill. This is actually a very, very good flank. Team Liquid all of a sudden are struggling. Mexi in the house. Nowhere close to the rest of his team. Ibby and Jeems. Having to do this on their own. Amazing flashbangs from Razor Edge. Are they moving in? Not just yet. Fantastic stuff and Team Liquid at the moment are absolutely playing scared because they can't see anything, to be fair. This play is phenomenal from Razor Edge, but it hasn't resulted in kills yet. They've done some really great things, but they have to follow it up with the push in. Do they dare? 
More flashbangs coming the other way now for Team Liquid. It looks like this is at a bit of a standoff. Both teams are going to be outside of the circle in just a second. 20 seconds before Phase 7 finishes. Gets some damage onto Udia, but trading onto Jeems now as well. This has got to be a push now. We've got to see another flashbang and a push. I think so. No, it's going to be the frag grenade this time around. Second frag. Aduzi saying, Udia, do not go in through that door. But that won't be necessary. Team Liquid eliminated. What an incredible fight there. And that means that TSM know exactly what's going on in this compound. And they're going to be like, yes, we'd very happily take on the winners of this fight. Thank you very much. So some potential third partyage coming in. Udia and Aduzi. Inside the compound, Monkey outside. We've also got three different teams on this western edge as well. We've got Northern Lights versus Digital Athletics versus Redline. First couple of shots being taken by Spyro. Sixbo caught in the middle of it all. Here's TSM on Raise Your Edge. Monkey, the player who is outside the compound, getting taken down. Vard has to make a decision between rezzing Fex and going for the rest of the fight. He's opting to rez. Miracu low. Needs to heal, but has also got a way out. I have a feeling this might come down to a potential flank from Vard and Fex. Fex very close to the edge of the circle, but should have enough time to heal. Miracu! Big nade into that house and that act. Wait! That's a self frag! That frag must have bounced! Oh dear, oh dear, are Razor Edge going to push this? Aduzi and Udia now moving in. Fex on the corner. And they weren't counting on Fex. Fex saves the rest of TSM. Not sure what happened with that frag grenade with Miracu, but all three of them are alive. And they beat Raise Your Edge. What an intense fight that was. This game is full of these kind of firefights. Absolutely insane. I'm going to try and watch as many of them as I can for you guys. Doing the production, casting, and observing at the same time is draining, trust me. But my god, these fights are giving me a buzz. They're giving me like a second wind, more energy. I'm looking for where the action is going to be happening next. And uh, TSM on the far side, they actually have that part of the circle to themselves. But the question is how much cover they're going to have. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look. How much cover are they going to have when they move down? Not a lot. This is, uh, this is a slope. This is a downward facing slope. It's not great. They're going to want to come down on this side here, I reckon. And sort of hide behind this big hill here. There's that. There's only so much you can do from here. You know what I mean? And Vard actually with the uh, Murado. I didn't realize they had those vehicles available. That actually might change things as well. Orange still just snaking. Wanting to stay until the end ideally. Five teams left alive. And 12 individuals at the 28 minute mark. Batulins thinking about pushing in with Northern Lights. But they realize it might not actually be an individual straggler. It could be an entire team. TSM a little bit split at the moment. Vard south side. Fex and Miracu north. That's because they haven't gotten in their vehicle yet. They're going to do that now. And it's a bike. So they'll be able to make that rotation very quickly indeed. Vard spotted. Needs to not go down at the moment. None of the teammates are there. Batulins getting a good shot off. No vest for Batulins as it stands. Oh, the rest of the team coming in as well. And that's a down onto Miracu. Northern Lights have now got TSM pinned. What are Redline going to do? Redline have an opportunity to third party. This fight is constantly changing. Dynamic situation here. All the grenades coming in now. Redline are being absolutely trampled by Northern Lights. Michael behind the wheel of the car will be the last member. And Spyro and Deep do it. Northern Lights are actually trampling this final circle. Still four teams left alive, by the way, and that's because Sixmo has been here the entire time going, What? Being as sneaky as he possibly can. Do they realize there's someone in these uh, smokes? I was about to say, yes, they do. Smyro finishes them off. And now, Vard being aggressive. Seven kills for TSM so far. Unlucky angle there. Gets spotted by Spyro, and he makes no mistake with those initial shots. Miracu goes down as well. TSM eliminated in third place. It is Na'Vi versus Northern Lights for the victory here in game number five. In between the tractor and the motorbike. Somehow going unspotted for the entire game. And the reason he's not just standing up and accepting his fate is because there's an opportunity for more points. And speaking of more points, it looks like they're moving. 
Here comes Spyro. Does he get the confirmed kill? He doesn't. He doesn't even quite get the knock. Really good reaction there from Bachelins and Northern Lights. Phase one, two games in a row. Northern Lights say, that's all well and good. We've just gone and won three. 12 kill chicken dinner in game number five. Our final Miramar game. And Northern Lights stamping their authority on tonight's EU Pro Scrims.